Hi. My name is Alan from Crash Test Security, and I will guide you through the Log4j vulnerability prevention, detection, and remediation. So let's get to it, shall we? What is Log4j? The Apache Log4j library is a logging library for Java widely used for many Java-based projects. On the 9th of December, a security researcher from the Alibaba cloud security team disclosed a dangerous remote code execution RCE, vulnerability in this library. In this vulnerability disclosure, many attacks have been spotted in the wild. The good news is that the Apache Software Foundation has already fixed and rolled out the vulnerability. In the release of Log4j 2.0, a new feature was introduced called Lookups. Lookups can be used to include additional data in the log entries. One of these lookups is the JNDI, Java Naming and Directory Interface, lookup, a Java API to communicate with a directory service. It can be used to resolve internal user identifiers to real user names. This lookup is the door opener for the newly discovered RCE vulnerability because one data type that can be returned from the LDAP server is a URI pointing to a Java class which is then loaded into memory and executed by the log4j instance. Due to improper input validation in the log4j library, injecting an arbitrary LDAP server from an untrusted source is possible. Since developers generally assume that the data written into the logs is handled as a normal text, no further input validation is being done, and untrusted user input makes its way into the logs. A log statement might look like the first line on the slide in a real-life example. A malicious user would now include a JNDI lookup, pointing to a malicious LDAP server in a URL parameter. The JNDI lookup would look like the second line on the slide. The log4j library then communicates with this LDAP server at attacker.com and receives the directory information, including values for the Java factory and the Java code base. These two values include the Java class from the attacker, which is then loaded into memory and executed by the log4j instance, which completes the code execution. Other reports have shown that JNDI makes it even possible to execute DNS queries by replacing the LDAP with DNS dollar gendy DNS forward slash forward slash attacker dot com slash DNS record. However, it is not clear if the DNS queries provide a way to successfully deploy a remote code execution at the time of writing. The first step should be to investigate if an attack has already happened. This can be done by searching the system logs for parts of the RCE payload. If a search for keywords such as gendy, LDAP, dollar, colon colon returns any logs, it should be investigated further if it was an actual attack or just a fingerprinting by security researchers. Many attacks were observed in the wild which did not deliver any malicious payload. Still, they were done by security researchers to understand how many applications are vulnerable to this attack. The next step is to identify all projects using the Log4j library. The project might be vulnerable if versions between 2.0 beta 9 and 2.14.1 are used. Since it is tough to figure out where this vulnerability is present, it might be safer to assume the project is vulnerable and patching the library is the best action to remove the risk from code execution. If the used version is below 2.0 beta 9, the project will not be vulnerable but the log4j library should still be updated because versions in the 1.x range are outdated and do not receive updates anymore. If a vulnerable project is found, it is recommended to check if any information logged with log4j includes information that the user can manipulate. This information includes URLs, any request parameters, headers, or cookies. If one of these is being logged, the project is vulnerable. This knowledge might help to dig deeper into the system logs and analyze if your web application was already targeted. There are free tools available on the internet to test if the web application is vulnerable. One of these tools is https colon slash slash log 4 shellhuntresscom which is open source and can be found on github https colon slash slash github.com slash huntresslabs slash log 4 shell tester if a vulnerable part of code was identified in the web application, one can use the payload provided by the mention tool and inject it into the web application. If the vulnerability was triggered, the testing tool would show the connections from your web application to their LDAP server. 
Since the Apache Software Foundation already patched the vulnerability, it is the best solution to upgrade Log4j to the latest and patched version 2.16.0. This will remove the risk from code execution. All 2.x versions below 2.16.0 are vulnerable. However, if it is impossible to update to the latest version, there are a few options to disable the lookups in Log4j to mitigate code execution risk. One option is to evaluate if the Log4j library in use supports executing the JVM with the option Java underscore OPTS equals Log4j 2.format message no lookups equals true. This disables the lookup functionality to remote servers. This fix should be possible for versions starting at 2.10.0. Another option for versions 2.10.0 and above can be to set either the system property log4j 2.format message no lookups or the environment variable log4j underscore format underscore msg underscore no underscore lookups to true. Older releases from 2.0 beta 9 to 2.10.0 can be mitigated by removing the gendy lookup class from the class pass. The command to do this is shown on the first line on the slide. You can find further information in the official advisory from Apache here https colon slash slash logging dot apache dot org slash log 4j slash 2 dot x slash security dot html. Some web application firewall, WAF, providers have already announced that they protect against this vulnerability. However, we recommend not solely relying on your WAF because there are so many ways to reformat the payload that WAFs might not catch all of them. Some examples are the variants of this payload shown in the last two lines in the slide. If you decide not to upgrade the log4j library, but mitigate the risk using one of the other options, it is imperative to test the effectiveness of the mitigation actions. This can be done with the open source testing tool described above. This is it for now. Be sure to follow our YouTube channel, as we will have more vulnerability tutorials coming up. Thank you.